Hey everybody, it's uh, June 6, 2009. Thanks for stopping by. I want to tell you a little story today that's absolutely amazing. Uh, a story about Murat Kurnaz. Oh, Turkey Adam. Chok, Chok Genç, Chok Buyuk. Kavrenge Sachla Uzun. Uh, Sakal. He's a Turkish guy, originally, who lived in Germany. Uh, and now picture this. There's a there's 15 American soldiers watching over a man who is uh, chained to a seat of a C-17 Globemaster airplane. And the Globemaster airplane, if you can believe this, is used to transport Chinook helicopters. And if you know what a Chinook helicopter is, you are absolutely floored right now because a Chinook helicopter is used to transport troops. It's uh, got two uh, rotors. Twin rotor helicopter inside an airplane. Isn't that amazing? Uh, they're also used to... Um, transport uh, Abrams tanks. But this airplane is being used to transport this one man. And he's chained to a chair. And this airplane has burned through 36,000 gallons of jet fuel. And it has refueled in the air. Now this man, he uh, he's completely sensory deprived. He's got the uh, Lightproof goggles. He's got the uh, earmuffs. He's got the mask over his mouth so he can't speak. Uh, and he's on a 17-hour flight with no food and no water. Now, just see if you could imagine that being on a 17-hour flight with no light, no sound, uh, no food and no water, chained to a chair. 17 hours and not being allowed to relieve yourself in any way. That's right. I don't know if I could hold it for 17 hours, but he had to. Now, what do you think they were doing to this guy? Were they sending him to Guantanamo for being a terrorist? Uh, now, you, one thing I did forget was that they were uh, constantly cursing him and humiliating him. Don't forget that. So why were they treating him this way? Was he some kind of terrorist? Actually, it turns out that on this flight, they were flying him home because he had been found innocent. Can you believe that? They treated him this way because they realized that he was innocent and they were sending him back to Germany. I mean, that should tell you something about just how crazy Guantanamo is. Now, uh, the reason why I found out about this was I went through uh, the list of detainees at Guantanamo just to see who they were and what they were accused of. Um, and it was pretty, uh, uh, pretty shocking, even to me, some of the accusations uh, against these people. Uh, some of them were arrested for wearing digital watches. Um, you know, some of them were. I mean, it, it, I can't remember any of the other charges, but they were so they were so ridiculous, and and many of them are believed to be innocent, but they're still detained. Uh, you know, and, and, and the important thing to remember is about Guantanamo, there's no legal process to get you out of Guantanamo. I mean, this guy, Murat Karnaz, he wasn't released because he was found guilty. He was found guilty uh, years before he was released. Uh, he, was found, I mean, he was found innocent years before he was released. It didn't matter. Uh, he was still detained. The only reason why he was released was because... Uh, there was a campaign in Germany where he had lived to free him. And uh, people worked on his behalf to uh, get, uh, get attention in the media 
and the media, uh, you know, basically publicized his arrest and, and detention until it became a public issue and people got, uh, you know, people got involved and people started caring about it. And that's when he was released for no other reason. Basically, they, uh, it, it became so popular, his case became so popular in Germany that the Chancellor of Germany prevailed upon George Bush personally to release him. And that's the only reason why he was ever released. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, think about that. I mean, if you were in jail and you knew that it would take a mass movement of an entire nation of people to get you free, I mean, that's pretty hard to do. <laughs> uh, you know, that's not going to happen for most people. And, it, and you know, there were, they were other people released from Guantanamo. I don't know what their circumstances were, but, uh, you know, most of them have not been released, and, and most of them probably never will be released, uh, you know, unless Guantanamo is shut down and, and it's starting to look like it may not be, uh, you know, under, under Obama. The uh, detainees at Guantanamo have started to say that their torture has escalated. And, uh, you know, I just don't, I don't know what Obama's going to do. I hope he closes it. And I hope he doesn't replace it with something just as bad. But I'm not too hopeful at this point. Uh, you know, looking at, at everything that, that's going on and, and what they've done to these people, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's uh, insane. Doesn't make any sense, uh, but I'll provide the uh, I'll provide the links for you. You can um, look at the uh, list of detainees in Guantanamo. You can uh, you can see um, the story of his uh, his detention, and you can see also I have a uh, uh, I have an interview where he talks about his uh, release and when he actually uh, was reunited with his family uh, and that is really amazing he when he when he gets to see his par uh, parents for the first time um, well I'll read you the interview he says uh, they ask him on the evening of August 24, 2006, you landed at the U.S. airbase in Ramstein. And he says, two German policemen were waiting for me there along with the driver. The restraints, the glasses, and ear protectors were taken off me. The Germans said, hello, Herr Kernaz, we want to take you to your family. My father was very thin and had white hair. I embraced my mother. She was crying and I embraced her until she stopped crying. And they asked him, Did you cry as well? Everybody cried. I did not. I do not know if I can still cry. Perhaps I forgot how to cry in Cuba. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just uh, amazing. Thanks for watching.